that brings us to this book, right? Because the thing is, is that one of my favorite composers of all time was a jazz musician named Duke Ellington. And uh, he wrote a fantastic song called It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing. Because the thing is, is that when people want to play the piano, they immediately look at it and they say, ooh, there's all these keys and I've got all these fingers and I want to start just like jumping on that instrument and doing all this stuff. And I say, hold on a second, hold on a second. Like, how well can you even move your hands back and forth? How, how well do you even understand movement? Because the thing is, is that 88 keys and 10 fingers equals infinite complexity. So as soon as you sit down at the piano, it is an extremely complicated thing. And one of the first things that goes out the window when it starts getting complicated is the most core piece of music, which is the movement, which is rhythm. So my philosophy, um, which has been pretty unusual as a piano teacher, um, has been that before we even sit down at the piano, we need to address rhythm. And I think the thing that has allowed me to continue doing this thing that is unusual in the piano education world is seeing the results that it has gotten for all of the people that I work with and all of the students. You know, that is why uh, you know, this rhythm training for pianists uh, exists. It is the rhythm curriculum that I have developed, um, which is something that we do before we even touch the piano in every lesson with every student. Um, no, no way around it. If you want to study with me, you have to study rhythm. If you don't want to study rhythm, then I'll give you the name of another piano teacher and you can go study with them. Now here's the thing. Over the pandemic, right, um, uh, I developed a YouTube channel uh, for my studio, and it was the first time that I really was able to encapsulate my entire curriculum. That was a really great process. It was 42 videos, uh, 42 steps to piano proficiency, and it addressed rhythm, theory, and reading. Um, but it was a weekly process, and I generated a lot of content, but it was definitely by the seat of my pants. And so um, the dream since the pandemic has been to take that series and refine it, right? Refine each piece into, hopefully, eventually, a, an entire series of books that each kind of ca encapsulate the, my, my process of, of educating the musical language, right? And of course, the one that I wanted to start with was rhythm, um, was the rhythm training for pianists, especially because this book doesn't exist. There are no other rhythm training for pianist books. There are rhythm training for drummers, and that was always something that I had to do when I finally decided I needed to um, take rhythm seriously and figure it out. But the problem with drum books is that there's a lot of extra stuff that drummers do that we as pianists don't necessarily need to do. Also, Pianists and piano pedagogy and classical piano, if you think about it, it's kind of a conservative group of people. And if it's not explicitly for pianists, they usually will not even acknowledge that it exists. So some people say, well, it's rhythm training for pianists, but can't anybody learn rhythm? And they absolutely can. I have actually gone through this method with string players, with guitar players, with wind players. It works for everybody. But because I'm, I am a pianist, and I made it with pianists, I wanted to give pianists specifically permission to study rhythm. And so now there is no excuse because there is a book for pianists to study rhythm. And, um, and so I'm pretty excited about that. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it useful and you'd like to support the Piano Dojo, please consider subscribing and buying the book 